by the first century AD, the Roman army was the growing, stabilizing, integrating force of the empire. It allowed for successful economic and political maneuvers, as well as serving as a social career ladder for the common man. At its beginnings many centuries before, Rome's army was a force made up only of land-owning citizens that could afford to equip themselves with weapons and armor. Military lines were arranged based on wealth and social standing. Hand-to-hand -hand combat was fought in a triple line formation with a checkerboard pattern. In the first row fought the younger soldiers, the second held men in their prime, and the third held the older veterans still of fighting age. Poorer citizen soldiers would aid these lines by luring enemy forces to advantageous positions, while the wealthiest were on horseback, the elite equestrian rank. This style of army proved effective and adaptable in battle. However, the army's organization and unprotected soldier status created havoc after war. In the 2nd century BC, moves were taken to create a standing, professional army, and the poorer classes were finally utilized. Soldiers were equipped equally, were paid modest sums, and reorganized to optimize efficiency. By the 1st century AD, the army was a viable and often attractive option. The legions, which were the largest divisions in the army, employed native citizens of Rome, captured people who had been granted citizenship, and even freed citizen slaves. With hard work, obedience, and some advantageous social connections, one could rise from lowly soldier to respected leader. The legions were supplemented by non-citizen troops, the auxiliaries, who were paid quite a deal less, but upon completion of their 25-year service, they would receive Roman citizenship, and if they wanted, could continue and try to climb to the upper rungs of Rome.